Well, <clears throat> hey everyone, uh, I'm back again. It's been ages since I made a video. It feels like I just want to apologise for that. I've just been busy, busy, busy with work and uh, exams and just trying to make some assignment deadlines. So I've just been in a dark room trying to study, but I'm giving myself enough time to keep up with what's going on with the wrestling. Uh, one of the things I want to say is since the uh, backlash, I didn't get to see it. Um, maybe I'll put a review of it, even though it's um, three weeks ago now. Um, I will say that I thoroughly enjoyed the show, and I'll even go out on a limb and say it was better than WrestleMania. Uh, <laughs> one thing that stood out to me, though, was the ending of the Hunter six-man tag Orton legacy match. And how actually during most of the match, the fans were just rapidly cheering Randy Orton, the heel, and they just were not that into anything that Triple H was doing. That was interesting to me. Uh, I wonder if they actually will end up doing a double turn with the two of them. Really, to be honest with you, ever since they've announced that Hunter was with the McMahons, you know, in that way, fans aren't going to warm to him. They're just going to be like, well, what the fuck? Why should we cheer for this guy? You know? And Orton's just got it right now. And I think that's where the money is on Raw with Randy Orton. Hopefully they do something with the other two legacy members though, because, how can I put it, they've got ability, they are solid wrestlers, Cody is probably a better talker, but Ted is the better wrestler, they just need their own things going on, because really, I just don't think many people care that much about them, to be honest with you, in fact, someone else said this, and I'll agree with them, I, I think it was Finnan who said this, but they had a better chance of getting over last year when they were pushed separately on their own and then pushed into an angle with Wharton than they have being with Wharton, which is uh, interesting. So I've got to compete with Sal and the kettle's on. Um, so, you know, hopefully something happens there with those two. And really, I'd be glad to see the back of a Hunter and Orton feud. We've seen it so many times, maybe eight times on pay-per-view. It was just about kept going when they did this angle with Stephanie and you know again I still wasn't all that sold on it and I didn't think Mania was going to be all that even if they did have Orton Hunter in this new twist I still thought oh well, didn't I see this match last year about five times so you know if you're going onto the pay-per-view market and you've got this recession going on you've got to be able to provide people with fresh matches that will intrigue them and they want to see you know Brock Lesnar, Randy Couture was successful for a reason, because it never happened before, and it was an intriguing fight that captured the buyer's interest, and in the end led to a one million point over buy rate, I think, and uh, you know I sold out arena on top of that, and probably goodness knows how much we'll make on DVDs, but that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, I watched Raw. Raw hasn't interested me too much other than what they were doing with MVP I hope fingers crossed that they keep this going with MVP uh, he's got some talent and they know now more than ever that they need to push some new stars I mean come on how many times are we gonna pay to see the same fucking main event over and over again until these fucking morons realize we're getting bored with this we want to see something fresh um, Smackdown, on the other hand, though, was more interesting to me uh, the last two weeks. The roster changes, actually, to me, in my opinion, have probably been more beneficial to Smackdown because, you know, the younger wrestlers are actually getting more of a, a chance, I feel. Jeff Hardy, I know he's had his main event push, but, you know, they're using him a lot more. Um, Edge always has had that big push. But CM Punk, I mean, he's been featured quite well on the show, and... John Morrison, it looked like, was going to have a feud with Chris Jericho, which was like, wow, I was really interested in that, but then they stopped that, and um, he's feuding with Benjamin, which isn't bad at all, uh, but a bit of a come down when Jericho looked like he was going to be the option, so that's a shame. But I mean, really, SmackDown interests me more than Raw right now, maybe because I'm just seeing fresh characters interact with each other, and hopefully... Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with the CM Punk thing. They've done his feud with Umaga now, so it doesn't look like he'll cash in the um, briefcase for a while. You never know. With Jeff Hardy being the top babyface, I think Punk's going to end up turning hill. And I've heard rumours that Edge is actually going to be off for a while. So, you know, there's that going on. 
Oh, sorry, I didn't turn my MSN off. Uh, another thing that I had heard was that um, Lance Hoyt signed with the WWE, and that's actually very, very interesting to me. Lance Hoyt, to backtrack, he came in as Kid Cash's bodyguard. He was okay at first. Then he kind of came back again with Kid Cash, and he was actually starting to get over. Then Kid Cash did that interview and got his ass fired. So Lance Hoyt was given a singles push, and Hoyt was really, really over. Like, there are impact tapings from 2005, where he's getting louder reactions than AJ Styles and all the top baby faces, and they're chanting, Hoyt, 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 you know, that ridiculous chant. But the fact is, he was really over, and it looked like, for a time, he was going to get a big push heading into the Spike TV deal. But, I don't know, it never happened. He got lost in the shuffle, and they just didn't do anything with him for about two or three years. He did the Rock and Rave infection, which, yeah, whatever. And he's just kind of been lost in a limbo, and he got released from his contract, I think, this year. So now he's apparently signed a developmental deal. I don't know if it was or a full contract with the WWE, and I'll be very interested to see what happens there. Hoyt has some potential. He's a big guy of about six foot six. Kind of like the old test diesel look, but the guy is very agile and he's got, you know, can do backflips and van terminators and things like that. I don't know if they'll let him do that in the WWE though, but it would be interesting to see what happens with him. I mean, he can get a good program with The Undertaker and not get squashed and not get buried. There's some hope for him. Uh, one more thing actually, just before I go um, Talk Wrestling is back on Play Radio UK. I'm going to put the link onto my page with the video. Uh, for those of you who remember over here in the UK, a few years ago we used to have a talk wrestling show with Tommy Boyd and Alex Shane, and now it's making its return tonight actually over in the UK at 6pm. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully this thing really takes off. Uh, you know, I'm very excited. It's about time we had a, a radio show back in this country and it was really good the first time and then they stopped it, which was a damn shame. It used to be on talk radio. So if anyone remembers that <clears throat> old radio show, uh, feel free to <clears throat> click onto my page and it will send you straight to it. I think they'll archive it, I think, later on in the evening. So, And look out, because I'll probably call in as well and you know, cause some trouble. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyway, thanks, guys, and uh, we'll be back later. <laughs>